Manchester music scene has been at the cutting edge of new music for several decades, and it's renowned as a birthplace of some major bands, such as Oasis, The Smiths, James, Blur, and The Stone Roses, to name but a few. So as well as new music, therefore, Manchester is also renowned as a centre of excellence in relation to classical music, with such places as the Royal Northern College of Music, which was formed in 1973. It is also the home of the world-famous Manchester Halle Orchestra, with its base at the purpose-built Bridgewater Hall. So it could be said that music runs through the veins of the people of Manchester, and this love and desire to drive new creativity continues today. In this film, we will be looking at three individual musicians trying to make a living from music. We will be finding out what motivates them and where this elusive desire to create and perform comes from, how they deal with success and failure, and whether this pursuit of music makes them happy or not. And does it really matter which? How far will they go to satisfy this desire and at what cost? Um, music isn't something like that I just like, it's, it's almost a, a need. I literally, I probably don't go a day without singing. I just, it's just one of them things. I performed at the Royal Albert Hall in London, doing backing vocals. Uh, for a friend of mine, Don Major, and then I've performed in like little bars, cafes, you know, like I've performed in Rag and Bone in Warrington, which is just like a small, small bar, so it really just ranges just anywhere. I think it's quite hard probably getting noticed because, you know, if, if, I've, if, if ever I've been to like open mic nights or something, there's so many good singers and artists and bands and you just think, Oh my God, am I gonna, you know, it, it does have, you have that kind of doubt in yourself, like, oh, there's so many good people, but I guess that's like that with anything, really. You've just got to really, you know, try and have a uniqueness about you so people really notice you and remember you. My relationship with music is a codependent one, I think. I think we both help each other. <laughs> Originally I wanted to be a doctor, so mum and dad were quite pushy, like in a sense, not not pushy, that sounds bad, but they were, you know, saying, go to college, go to uni, get a medical degree, then you, then you can do your drums on the, on, the, on the side sort of thing, but eventually I was like, no, I need to be doing drums full time. So they kind of said, are you sure? And I was like, yes. So they said, okay, go and do that then. And that was that. Was that. So they absolutely love it. It's all about finding inspiration which works for you and kind of inspires you to make the music that you make. Never really, you kind of get frustrated, but you never want to give up. I think if you wanted to give up, then you're not in the right game. I think it should be a case of kind of, if you, if you ever get low in music, I think it's because you may be just kind of frustrated at not being where you want to be at. Whereas you need to then try harder rather than give up. I don't know if you're giving up sense. I think when you have such an instinctive feeling like that, you can't help but do it. So I don't, I don't think I would be me without the music element. It just doesn't make sense that you know to be me without music. Is the Manchester music scene has got such a nice community feel to it. So everybody supports each other. Everybody helps each other out. And when you kind of get one foot within the industry and you start to learn to know more musicians, you realise how small it is. So you realise that that drummer plays for three different brands and that singer's a backing singer as well as this. But there's a really nice community feel to it. Everybody supports one another. Everybody goes to people's nights. It's a really nice feeling when people kind of tell you that they like the music that you make and they've enjoyed your performance. I think as a musician, you always, you always are your worst self-critic. Um, so you're always kind of critiquing everything that you do and I'm rarely satisfied with what I do but when people do come up to you or say that was really good it helps you especially when it's taken you a while to break through the barrier of putting it out um, and because it's obviously very close to your soul what you write and what you do and it's very personal it is nice to have somebody to kind of confirm that what you're doing you know you're on the right track at least anyway. On the face of it three very different people 
but they have one thing in common, the need to perform. If passion, determination and resilience is what you need to succeed in this business, they can't fail.